I mean, seems a little high to me. Hey. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I uh, am still kind of stuck on the process here. Um, I don't really know where to go at this point, so it's uh, proving to be a bit challenging because, like, I'm willing to, like, kind of throw the time and uh, energy at it, and if needed money, you know, try and avoid that if we can, but um, I just don't know, like, how to even begin tossing it there, or, like, how I could improve it. So, uh, I'm at a little loss at the moment, um, on what to do next. Uh, hope you guys are going well, though, and if you're working on any projects, I hope they're doing good, too. So, uh, right now, where I'm at with the, the whole project is I've got, uh, a, a new HEI distributor. Um, that I put in, um, well, when I say put in, I mean I took the old one out and placed that one there. It's not uh, connected to any wires or anything uh, yet, um, but it does have the vacuum advance, which I have been told is a good thing. Um, uh, need to figure out if it's even pointed the right way, but I also trying to figure out where, because over here, um, on these things, I uh, see one of them's listed as tack and the other's battery. So I've got to figure out, um, I've been told that I need 12 volts to go into that battery one, and the tack one uh, isn't quite as important. So uh, these are the guys that were inside of this thing, um, and uh, they went to the coil, which is that thing right there. So I'm thinking that's got to have 12 volts to it. I don't know which one of those two wires would, though. I had the good old trusty multimeter out, but I also don't know how to use it. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem. Also, I uh, don't have my fancy Nancy uh, uh, GoPro camera, so got my cell phone. So hope it's not too bad, but... Uh, Getting into the electrical part, which is the part I knew I was going to have problems with, uh, is a lot of fun. So I'm going to try and make it work. I just don't really uh, kind of know where to go. And I also need to get a uh, 90 degree bend pipe thing for the water neck. Because um, the one that came with it is that one. And that guy's too big. He won't fit with the HEI distributor. But... I've seen other videos that have had that same problem, so I am trying to uh, figure it out and work around it. I will let you know how that goes. On the plus side though, uh, these tires are still uh, looking pretty good. They've had uh, three weeks to dry now, and uh, they are, um, they're fine. I mean, they're, they're wheels, I guess. Uh, so I don't know if I want to put the original uh, uh, caps that go over the whole thing, hubcaps, or get like a little poverty cap for the middle, which would give it a different look. Um, so if you have any thoughts on that, uh, oh God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Put it down in the comments. And then of course we still have uh, all of these issues to kind of deal with. Um, haven't finished. Uh, Got the fuel hose here. It's uh, rudimental, rudimentary installed. Um, runs to the front. Uh, I am confident that it does push gasoline through, so that's a plus. Um, uh, it's still really, really gross and dirty in there, so I don't really know how to take care of that. Um, yeah, so. Uh, the progress has not been going quite as quickly as I would have liked it to, but um, here we are. And uh, do need to do the brakes at some point. Uh, that part of the job, I am 68.6% uh, confident on 
uh, being able to complete though. However, however, if the engine doesn't run, do you need brakes? I guess there's two types of people in this world. There's big picture people, and then there's nuts and bolts people. And I'm a nuts and bolts people. So when it's like, hey, all you gotta do is, uh, you know, daisy chain this uh, wire from the distributor to the uh, automatic choke, just go ahead and do that. Like, yeah, I mean, I get that, but like the specifics of it, like how do you do it? And there's just literally everything, uh, like, uh, I mean, like, I understand what, like, the general principles are, but, like, uh, the actual, like, the how do you do it when the rubber meets the road, um, that's the tricky part, and I don't know, it miffs me a little bit, I suppose, when people are like, oh, just do this and that, um, I mean, like, yeah, I get that, I do, uh, but exactly how do you do it um, so anyway just my thoughts at the moment so this is a uh, wire cutter thing mabop tool um, haven't really used one before um, so this should be exciting basically what I think I need to do is cut the wire here um, and put in a new wire with splice that I have um, because I need to run that to the tack on the distributor and then over to the choke because the choke's automatic. Um, so I'm going to try and do that and <laughs> see if I blow up the car. I don't know. All right, so where I'm at now is I've identified this red wire as having power when the key is on. So uh, it's also broken, as you might be able to see. So I've got to cut this electrical tape off of it to free the wire to try and make a repair on it. Um, again, this is stuff that uh, I really just have no clue about, so we're learning together. And that's okay. Okay, uh, freed up the wire, so uh, I guess I can try and figure out how to do a splice on it, maybe? Uh, yeah, so still, uh, still working on the wiring. It's uh, warmed up in Central Texas, it's uh, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and splice the wire and then run a longer wire. Um, theoretically, I assume that it should be fairly easy to do. Um, I mean, we're just putting two wires together and joining them, so we'll give it a shot. A friend of mine gave me this uh, handy dandy uh, camera holder, so now I have two hands, so hopefully that helps. Oh boy! Oh! Too late to go back now. Uh, it's fine. That's fine, I didn't need a car anyway. Although... If I could use this, that would be nice. Well, that even... Oh, I guess, I, I guess I've ruined this anyway. Might as well just keep going. Will that fit on the tack? By George, I think it does. So 
I think this is, I don't know, what, it, what does that look like to you, 12? putting it in there and should slide out. Nope, smaller than 12, 14. Sixteen. Okay. Copper. Just put it in there and turn it. And then once you cut through the plastic, you can just slide it off. So then you would you would put it in there. Too much off because when I put it in there, it's kind of sliding through the top, and I don't think it's supposed to do that. You know what? Just keep going. All right, so, this is a connector, so you shove in one end of the wire here make sure you get all those little strands in there that's uh, more challenging than it looks but you shove in one here and one there and then crimp it together with our crimp tool um, and then you put uh, some heat shrink around it to keep it uh, waterproof is what my research has told me so far. What do you guys think? I got two uh, two wires. This is 18 gauge and this is 16 gauge. Oh, 16, yeah. That's the one we're using. <laughs> no brainer. And I have no idea how much wire to use. That looks like that would give me plenty with room for mistakes which there most certainly is going to be. All right, so I've cut off a length of wire. I will try joining it to the one that gives me uh, electricity when the key is on, and then slide it into this one. Uh, well, I guess I gotta connect it to this guy because he's gonna help me move on. Uh, it is not easy to get uh, the wire in here. Um, you got to get it into that interior piece of up, up, up. All right. Maybe I, maybe it is. All right. Uh, so I need to put. All right. So this is a different kind than than this one. So this one has some solder in it that, when you heat it up, should melt and make a strong waterproof connection. Additionally, these will uh, shrink up around the cord. So I think this is gonna be a better way to go than uh, this guy. Um, so let's try and get it on the other one. Now with this kind, I shouldn't need a, uh, a jacket around it. I should just be able to kind of put it on there. Very, very tight clearances though. Terrible. Okay. It's fine. It's 
fine. Uh. How did that happen? All right, let's get a little bit more. Why, uh? That should be enough to cause a fire. <laughs> It's uh, difficult to get this to stay the bundle to go into the the thing here. No! Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, shoot, that's fine. Uh, also, uh, appear to have punctured the plastic in my efforts to crimp it, which uh, pretty sure you're not supposed to do. So, I don't know. We're having fun here, people. <laughs> All right, that well, I'm, I'm gonna say that one is toast. Maybe if I try putting it on this end first, it'll be uh, be a little bit better. I don't know why I'm filming myself being stupid. I mean, that's kind of odd to do, but here we are. Come on, come on guys. It's your home. Do you want to go into your home? Copper is a pretty metal though. Don't let no one tell you different. I mean, is that, are we in in? Okay, good. It's hard getting the second one in because, like, the wires are already filling up from the first one. So, I don't really understand that. Uh, uh, uh. See, I just, like, maybe if I took the other ones out a little bit. Nope. I'll come back to you. Okay, um, I think I got the connection on. It seems to be holding. I used the other style um, of uh, connector here. And then um, instead of using the one that says uh, crimp, which uh, was putting holes in it, I used uh, this one that says INS, which I assume means insulation. So uh, it's got red a red dot next to it. So I assume that means if you use this on a car, it will burn it down. So we're doing good. All right, so now we're putting on a jacket cover to 
uh, try and seal this from the elements the best we can. All right, so that's uh, kind of around there. Let me just take our handy dandy smoke starter and uh, try and shrink it down as best we can without burning all the other wires that are right next to it. So look forward to that. You don't want to leave it on there too long. You'll burn the wires, obviously. It's fire. Just want to kind of shrink it down. Shrink it down, shrink it down. I mean, that's... That seems pretty crappy work, um, but will it work? All right, let's test it out, see if that connection's working. Um, so this is, I got my test light hooked up to uh, my negative end of the battery. The key is off, so nothing should happen. And we're not getting any light. So let's try it with the key on. All right, the key is now on. So the light should light up uh, when I touch it. Oh, ha ha, ha ha ha. All right, moving in the right direction. Uh, so not able to get one of those little uh, shrinky sleeves around this one. So I'm going to wrap it with electrical tape to try and keep out any elements like dirt and debris that may damage the wires. I have checked and made sure that the wire is still carrying a voltage at this point. So that's good. <sighs> All right, there's some classy work if I ever saw it, but it may work. Next step now will be to uh, splice in one more and continue this little daisy chain of uh, fire hazard. All right, I've got uh, this third one crimped up. Uh, basically my strategy for that is I cut off about a half inch of uh, plastic on the end, slide it inside, and then I crimp that end to hold those two together. And then I do the same to the other side and crimp it to hold those two together. Then I crimp the middle one. I don't know how much force to use, but uh, I don't want to like break through the, the, the outside, but I want to make sure that it's a secure fitting, which I think this is. So what I'm going to do now is test this to make sure there's continuity to the end of this wire. And then once I'm done with that, I will uh, pop on this, which uh, I already made sure fit onto the automatic choke or electric choke. Um, and maybe this will be wired up. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, moment of truth. Time to see if this connection gets all the way to the end. And we have a bulb. So it does. Ha! Let's hook it up and see what I can break. Okay, so to recap, this was the wire that uh, went in to the, the coil, which was here. I took the coil out. I found the wire, it worked with keyed power, so I cut off the broken end of it and spliced on more wire. Uh, this is 16 gauge wire. I chose red because it's moving power and that seemed appropriate. Then from there, that goes over to here and splices with the old connector uh, that was on it to go uh, into the tack, or I'm sorry, to the battery because uh, it needs battery to run. So that's up in there. Um, that already had a second wire coming off of it. So I spliced it again. And now it's on the automatic choke. Um, so 
I think I'm moving in the right direction, guys. Uh, let's give it a go. At this point, um, the car, it starts, uh, which is great, and I will show that to you in a little bit. Uh, but it does idle at about 8,000 RPM, which is probably too high for any sort of automobile to be at. I'm not sure why it's idling so high, uh, although I do have a theory. So, this uh, racket try doesn't really go forward anymore, but this thing does. And when I push it forward, it lets off on that, and I think that's where the gas is coming from. So just naturally, if I'm not holding it, it's uh, quite a bit depressed. So I'm wondering if there's something I need to adjust on here to get this to, to stay forward. So it's not like, you know, it's up there in the Ripums, and uh, that's, uh, well, that's not going to work. So... Uh, I haven't figured out how to reduce the oil pressure, but I'm going to start it up so you guys can see. And if you have any ideas, please let me know. I don't know if uh, well, what I was talking about earlier with the thing pulling back on its problem. That seems like a problem to me, but I don't like no on that. Anyway, we'll give it a shot. I mean, seems a little high to me. Ugh. I mean, this isn't even like, this isn't even touching, so. This screw really does nothing to adjust this. I don't know. But maybe this thing, because like, this won't go farther anymore, but this thing will. And that's like pushed, putting a lot on that. So I'm wondering let if- Let it go again. Go for it. So I'm wondering if I just hold it here like this and you start it. If that would maybe not have it so much in the rip <laughs> I don't know if there's a way that you adjust this this guy, but he's really seems to be kicking up that uh, that rev. Yeah, and I think maybe if I just hold it like this, it won't be so insane. Well, that's uh, that sound lower. I mean, it's. It's up there in the Ripums. Derek would love this car. Because the, the only thing that it could be to me is too much fuel at this point. Because obviously the distributor is working. Um, obviously there's fuel getting in there. Um, now we did put a bunch of fuel in there. Uh, and other high inflammatory accelerants. Um, this also... Prop, it, prop that up so they help, help it dry it out. This also was a piece. Maybe maybe I need to depress this. What is it? I don't know. It used to be up there. I don't think that's anything to it. I think you just... Well, for one thing, we've got the carburetor on there backwards. No. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> Want to try firing it up one more time? I put the... I plug the automatic... By the way, distributor and automatic choke both work. Pretty cool. I knew they would. Yeah. Bring in the thunder. Bring in the thunder. Oh yeah. 
She's a runner. Get that nice smell of burning whatever. And it doesn't sound like there's a misfire. Like no, it sounds like all, <laughs> <laughs> sounds no. like all eight cylinders are hitting at the same time. <laughs>